Traders, how are you with Marcello? What a crazy week. It started on Wednesday when Powell said that he was going to start raising the interest rates. Powell being the uh, chairman of the Federal Bank in the United States, a central bank in the U.S., scared the pants out of everybody. Market crashed and it recovered a little bit. And then we had the second largest collapse of a bank in the United States. There was other news as well. There's other crypto exchanges that are being sued. USDC depegged from the dollar, meaning that another crypto is going bankrupt essentially. And we even have the military in the United States talking about how there's alien motherships in the mo in the solar system. Let's go ahead and get started. So simple week. We only had the 16th largest bank in the United States collapse. The government, the FDIC actually took over the, the operations of the company to be able to go ahead and give depositors their money back up to $250,000. The markets overall had their worst week since June. The U.S. stocks obviously collapsed for almost 5% in some cases. Canada also went down by over 4%. Markets in the U.S., or excuse me, in Europe went down as well with Switzerland being the biggest loser of all at almost 4%. Latin America mostly lower also. They pretty much dropped very similar to all the other countries. Africa and the Middle East mostly mixed. And Asia and far in the Far East mostly lower as well. Bitcoin and cryptos on Wednesday, Bitcoin fell to a three-week low after Powell talked about the interest rates. Uh, they, they call it a hawkish testimony, meaning... He basically said that most likely going to have to raise rates more than than we people were expecting. And that is big piece of news, because remember, since we live in such a financialized economy, a little bit of movement to the upside in the interest rates really detriment the economic growth engine, which has been this super massive bubble that we've been living in since 2008. And in case you didn't know, the, the, the mother of all bubbles, the depression and crisis that we're walking into right now actually started in the dot-com bubble in 1999. There was a hedge fund that collapsed. If I'm not mistaken, it was called long-term capital management. They collapsed. The, the Fed, the government in the U.S. basically, instead of allowing it to fail, you know, gave all the toxic debt to different banks. Then in 2008 and 2009, we had the banking crisis. Then after that, you know, we just the crisis keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm gonna, I think I'm going to do a video on that. Let me know if you guys want me to do that to kind of give you the time frame. And remember, the bank collapse isn't completely bad, right? This is actually a good thing for traders, for example, because traders make a lot more money in volatile markets. So if you haven't learned how to trade yet, definitely recommend it. Bitcoin and other news, Bitcoin fell to a three-week low. As I mentioned to you guys, Silvergate Capital Corp disclosed plans to wind down their, op their operations and voluntarily liquidate. This is in the aftermath of FTX's e explosion. I'll show you guys a, a picture. Hopefully my guys added on there. It's like a domino where everything starts with the increase in the interest rates. And you can see that the, the collapses are getting bigger and bigger. And soon we'll have the collapse of the financial system where you can get your digital ID and use your government coin. Rappers were right. Crypto lender Silvergate Bank, one of the largest lenders to major crypto firms, their, their stock went down over two, 42%. They had a $1 billion loss in quarter four last year. That uh, again, so not only it was F, SVB, which is silver, silver, the Silicon Valley bank that collapsed this week. It was also a crypto bank that collapsed as well. Bybit, which is the ninth largest crypto exchange, is stopping wire transfers for fiat for USD, the US dollar citing partner service outages. Do you guys see how, you know, the crypto space is kind of getting in? Elon Musk actually shared a uh, a meme that was, was pretty good. It basically said, and I'll, I'll try to I'll remember to put it up here, but it basically said crypto, you know, crypto is a scam, put your money in banks. And then on the other side, it says banks are a scam, put your money in crypto. So we're just going to end up, you know, most people don't know that before these fiat currencies existed, people used even seashells as currency.
So keep that in mind. USDC, which is another stable coin, broke its peg against the dollar. Remember that a lot of these stable coins like USDT and USDC and BUSD are all supposedly tied to the dollar. The company called Circle, which owns USDC, had 3.3 billion of their 40 billion tied up in the Silicon Valley Bank fiasco and also Binance and Coinbase, Binance being the absolute largest crypto exchange in the world, Coinbase being the largest in the United States, we're going to suspend USDC conversions for now. Tether, which is USDT, said that they have no exposure to SVB, to the bank that collapsed, but I wouldn't be so... Uh, I wouldn't be so positive that they're going to survive either. KuCoin, which is the fourth largest crypto exchange in the world, said that they're getting sued by the New York state regulator on the fact that they didn't register with the state before they allowed people to buy and sell their cryptos on its platform. They have over 27 million users across 207 countries and regions. And for the week... The good, no good news in crypto, unfortunately. Bitcoin was down over 11% at just over 20,000. Commodities, there is some good news this week. The global food prices slid for the 11th month in a row and could soon start showing up in your supermarket. So thankfully, at least the prices of food is going down. U.S. cattle prices, however, hit a nine-year high on the fact that the national herd drops below a 50-year low. And you guys will see a graph there how the overall graph is going down for the amount of uh, cattle that we have in the U.S. Oil rose after far better than expected U.S. job data, but lower on the week. Obviously, we have the situation with, with the collapse in the bank, which spooked absolutely everybody. I think we might see a, a Black Monday, for example, when the markets open up again. U.S. crude went down almost 4%, and also Brent almost 4% as well. This is it's just two, two things. One, Powell on Wednesday, remember, said that he was going to have to raise rates a lot more aggressively than people thought. So that scares people because if they do in increase the interest rates, the economy is not going to do well. If the economy doesn't do well, there's less demand for oil. And then again, on Friday, the collapse of the bank, not only the, the 16th largest bank in the United States, the, I'm going to get to that in just a moment. But the crypto bank as well, again, if we walk into a financial crisis and we actually do have a recession, people are going to buy a lot less oil. And that's primarily the reasons why crude went down. Kath Neumeyer, which is the president and CEO of First Majestic Silver. He, this is a huge mining company. You guys know that I'm primarily and for a while now been been investing and also really interested in silver. He's saying that a lot of automotive firms like Tesla, for example, could soon purchase silver mines to be able to control the supply chain of the critical metals required in EVs. He also said that this could send the price up to $125 an ounce for silver. And remember, the reason why I'm such a, a, a proponent of silver is because Silver is the most conductive metal in the world. So they use it. There's a lot of demand that goes in for the batteries for electric vehicles in addition to the solar panels. Now, I'm going to give you guys some of the, the numbers here. The estimated consumption for the solar panel industry when it comes to silver is 160 million ounces. Right, so 160 for the, for the cars. Excuse me, for the solar panels. 160 million ounces for the solar panels. EVs, electric vehicles, need about 100 million ounces. So that together is 260 million ounces. Well, they're projecting a 200 million ounce deficit this year. And that doesn't include the growth rate of the electric vehicles and the solar panels. You see how that works? Now, why is the price so low? Even though there's a huge deficit, manipulation. Precious metals mixed for the week. Gold went up 0.62% to 1,869, while silver went down over 3.5% to 2063. Now getting into the good stuff, which is the collapse of SFB Financial Group, Silicon Valley Bank. Basically what happened was they ran into a liquidity issue. I'm not going to get into the details because this is a super long recap because of all the stuff that happened this week, but essentially they had a liquidity crunch. I'll, I'll do it in a separate video if you guys want. Just leave it there in the comments. And remember, if you guys have any questions or things you want me to cover, just leave it with hashtag Ask Marcello. I'll be happy to go ahead and pull that for you. And leave your like on YouTube because the, the cost of the like button hasn't gone up yet. It helps a lot with the algorithm. Thank you, guys. So 
SV, SVB or the bank that collapsed this week essentially had a liquidity crunch. It has to do with the increase in the interest rates in addition to basically the startup scene and the crypto scene uh, collapsing for the most part. So they were going to issue, uh, I think it was $2 billion worth of debt, excuse me, $1.25 billion worth of common stock, 500 million of depository shares. Basically, they couldn't raise the money. And so what happens in the US banks banking system and most banking systems around the world, it's called a, it's called a fractional reserve banking system. To put it in a nutshell, let's say I deposit a dollar into the bank, they can go out and lend 90 cents of it. So really of the dollar that I deposited, they only have 10 cents of my money. So what happens if the majority of people go to the bank to withdraw all of their money? They don't have enough money to cover it. So then that's what's called a bank run. And this is what happened in this scenario. So they essentially went bankrupt. The feds moved over. They're going to guarantee the insurance from the FDIC, which is up to $250,000 per person in the account. The only bad thing is that 97% of the people aren't FDIC insured and a ton of the startup space. This was mainly a bank that helped a lot of startups. I have the numbers here. 1,500 climate and energy companies could face problems and more than 60% of the community solar financing in the U.S. involved the bank. So this is going to be a huge, huge problem. But don't, 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 you know, don't, don't worry because soon we'll have the digital money and your digital ID to use. It's going to be amazing. Don't worry. Their stock went from $763 to zero in 16 months. And speaking of the U.S. banking system, $19.2 trillion in deposits in the U.S. banking system, $19.2 trillion and $124 trillion and liabilities. Remember that dollar that you deposit, they only have 10 cents per dollar. Let's hope the system is stable. Average employee that stayed at a job over the last year, year over year, got a raise of 7.2%, while average employee that changed his job got a raise of 14.2%. So don't be loyal to your job because they're not gonna give you as big of a raise if you go somewhere else. Visa, MasterCard, halt work on gun merchant codes by pressure, especially from a lot of the Republican states. Uh, the, the, um, the people that are against this are saying that basically they're gonna use people to track people that are legally buying guns in the United States because technically it is still legal. The gap between the two-year treasury yield and the 10-year treasury yield widened to a hundred basis points on Tuesday. It hasn't been this bad since September 1981. If you guys don't know what that means, essentially the interest on the debt in the United States, when things get really bad, people get nervous that when they have their money liquid, so the demand for the short-term debt goes up. And that means that the interest rate goes up compared to the long-term debt, which goes down. And then that inversion between the two treasury bonds has been a reliable indicator of a recession for the last 50 years. So we're basically walking into a recession. Now, remember, as I mentioned to you guys in the beginning, just because things are getting really bad doesn't mean that there is an opportunity because there's always an opportunity to make money. So keep that in mind. U.S. home sales have fallen for the last 12 months. One of the things that's really interesting also, in addition to the real estate market, is over half of the mortgages originated in 2020 or later, including refinances, which means nobody's going to sell their house if they have a 3% mortgage payment, right? 3% interest on their mortgage. And there's not enough people that are going to buy either, which means that 17 or so percent of the economy, which is the real estate and construction market, is just going to be flat, right? There's nobody buying. There's nobody selling. If you do want to sell, there's no buyers. Big problem. According to the Atlanta Fed, the proportion of income needed to buy a U.S. home was 42.9% in 2022. It was 41.1% in 2006, basically meaning the majority of people just simply just can't afford to buy a house anymore. Every USD, according to the Congressional Budget Office, every dollar of the budget, we're taking on $1.29 in debt. 
excuse me, let me, let me rephrase that. Every dollar that the government takes in, we're spending a dollar 29, 70% of all the dollars in existence were created in the last two years. Now, if you wonder why we're seeing the inflation, if you guys saw Janet Yellen recently talking about the reason why we're having inflation is because of climate change, God forbid, they actually blame it on their own policy, right? And that's essentially the reason why we're seeing the, the inflation. And, and this started during the 2011 with, with George President Bush. And a lot of times what they want us to do is fight with each other about politics. That's why I always try to do these videos apolitical, right? Doesn't matter if it's the left or the right, Democrats and Republicans, literally both of them are doing it. And it's getting worse every single time. It started with Bush with the financial crisis in 2008, 2009. It got worse with Obama, it got worse with Trump. It's getting even worse now with Biden. So it's not just one side or the other. We're literally just, it, they're both driving the car to the cliff. They're, one just drives it slower than the other. So the amount of debt that we have right now is $31.6 trillion or about $94,500 per person, $246,000 per taxpayer. And it, you know the debt that the budget that Biden just issued, he wants to raise taxes when the economy isn't doing well. He wants to raise corporate taxes to 28% from 21. He wants to raise capital gains taxes to 39.6 from 20, supposedly for people only, they're making more than 400,000. That's how the federal tax started, right? It was just a 2% rate. Now look at the amount that we're paying. And, and just, you know, tax raises across the board. Other than that, the political news, the Peruvian exiled president of Pedro Castillo, which has been detained for the 36 months. Uh, he basically tried to rule by decree without Congress and they put him in jail for that. France is facing another day of widespread protests after Macron, which is the fresh president, wants to reform the pension age of 64. He basically wants to raise the uh, the age of people that go, go on retirement. Transport workers and refinery employees begin rolling strikes around the country. And leaked 2020 messages reveal former UK health secretary's plan, quote, to frighten the pants off everyone by developing a new strain for the pandemic. If it was a real pandemic, they wouldn't have to advertise it. Do you agree? Where, where's my button at? The preppers were right. Economic news, layoffs in the US has hit its highest since 2009. The tech sector now has accounted for over a third of the 180,000 job cuts announced. In February alone, there were 70, over 77,000 people that got laid off from work. Due to that fact, the employment claims, the unemployment claims rose by 21,000 ending the week on March 4th. It's the biggest increase in five months. And employers across the U.S. added 300,000 311,000 jobs in February, which was a lot stronger than expected. Unemployment rate rose to 3.6%, including the participation rate at 62.5%. 6, and one of the things that I thought was really interesting is the average hourly wage for a worker in the US, their wages went up by 4.6%, but the CPI inflation was 6.4%. Now, remember, if they calculated the inflation the same way that they used to calculate it in the 80s, it would be about 15 or 17 percent. So the question I have for you is, is, is your salary going up by 15 to 20 percent a year? Corporate news, Meta Platforms, largest social company in the world, owner of Facebook, is going to lay off thousands of employees, another 13%. They're going to reduce Sirius XM, another company going to lay off 8% of its workforce. GM even said that they're going to offer voluntary buyouts for the majority of its 58,000 US white collar employees. They're trying to cut down $2 billion in structural costs over the next two years. WW International, which is Weight Watchers, announced that they're gonna buy the subscription telehealth platform called Sequence. So now instead of trying to help you lose weight by sending you meals, they're also gonna send you pills that you can pay for monthly. Like every, you're gonna own nothing and be happy, right? Now even I had to buy the, the Adobe software so my guys could process the videos because before you just bought the software and you installed it and that was it, now you have to pay monthly for it. 
right? Tesla is reportedly revamping its Model Y and also its Model X. The Model Y, if you guys didn't know, is the best-selling electric vehicle in the world, so they want to keep it fresh to keep selling it. Trade news, according to two Chinese solar forms, firms, the U.S. imports have continued for the solar panels from China. They stopped it due to a new law banning goods from forced labor, but now supposedly they're continuing it because if not, it would freeze Biden's clean energy and climate change goals clean energy. Have you guys even ever looked at a, at a mine for cobalt or, or lithium? It's not good for the environment. China's exports fell by 6.8%, declining less than expectations in trade news. And in addition to that, the customs data showed that the business between China and Russia has increased by double digits between January and February from last year and this year. And China is saying that the relationship with Russia is increasingly doing well in a turbulent world. Technology and the hypocritical news of the week, New York Mater implore shops to make people take off their masks due to crime. Remember that they were one of the people that were mandating masks during the pandemic. Wartime scenario unfolds in Taiwan as Taiwan is suspecting Chinese ships of cutting undersea internet cables. It wasn't for the island of Taiwan proper, but an island just to the north that's a little bit closer to China. This one was actually pretty cool. Scientists to cut, discover a superconducting material that could bring a total revolution in energy and electronics. So essentially, you know, when you drive a car, if it's not aerodynamic enough, then the aerodynamics, the air literally stops the car eventually, right? Well, in electricity, when electricity is moving from one place to the next, it has a lot of resistance as well. So with this new material, they can literally save up to 200 million megawatts that are currently lost to resistance, meaning a lot of money and energy can be saved. And it's also going to help things like medical equipment and hovering trains, things like that. Pentagon's UFO unit, the director of that unit and a Harvard Astronomy Department chair co-authored a paper saying that alien motherships could be flying through our solar system. And in Norway, the global doomsday seed vault is going to get a new batch of seeds echoing the story of Noah in the Bible, if you guys haven't read it. Investment news, after a two-year crackdown in the private sector, the Communist Party chairman that just got voted in again, I believe, for another five years, if I'm not mistaken, President Xi, Dp Xi Jinping of China Communist Party said that it's now safe for startups uh, to get going again, to be able to help rebuild the country's economy. A lot of people, however, remain weary, because if you guys remember... Nobody's heard from Jack Ma, the billionaire that started Alibaba. So a lot of people are like, ah, I think I'll pass. I don't want to get hidden in a closet after I become too successful. And international news or events, there's another atmospheric river that are hitting California. The snowpack in California is 177% higher than the average amount for the date. But don't remember, global warming. In addition to that, Lima is going to get the rain in four days, what they normally get in a year. And the northeast of the United States is going to get hit by a huge nor'easter storm. You can see crazy weather all over the place. Longtime regional foes Iran and Saudi Arabia agreed Friday to resume diplomatic relations after China-led negotiations. Let them, uh, what's the word in English? Uh, stomp on their quarrels, right? Kind of get along again. And in unusual facts this week, Turkey, um, hopefully I remember to send this video to my guys due to the earthquakes. You guys can see a tree literally split in half uh, when the when the ground actually moved about 25 feet or eight meters, which is the kind of things I think we're going to start seeing a lot more often. That's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe and don't, don't forget the preppers were right.